Hi, my friend. We're starting a new section of the program, and this one on self-responsibility in marriage, which is the first habit of a happy marriage. This habit states, I'm responsible for my own happiness and well-being within our relationship. I choose my attitudes, thoughts, communication, and behavior. When things go wrong, I make strengthening choices to correct the problem rather than blaming you or making excuses. Well, the word responsibility has a lot of different connotations, so let me be clear about what I'm talking about. Self-responsibility means that you take ownership of your life. You're not a passenger, in the, but you're in the driver's seat of life. Life doesn't simply happen to you. Rather, you shape your life by your ability to make choices about how to think, how to feel, and what to do in every circumstance of your life. By recognizing your responsibility, you accept that you're the primary agent and creator of your life, not only of your fate, but even your inner experience. So, you might ask, what does this have to do with marriage? Everything. Marriage works when you take responsibility for yourself, your mood, happiness, self-esteem, needs, and well-being. All of it. Marriage doesn't work when you slough off your responsibility, or you expect your partner to be responsible for your mood, your happiness, your well-being. Likewise, marriage works when you allow your partner to take responsibility for his or her mood and attitudes and happiness and, and so on. As simple as this concept seems, I want to suggest that it's not easy to put your responsibility into practice. In fact, it's so easy to slough it off on your partner. We do it all the time. For example, you're thinking in your own head that you wouldn't be in such a bad mood if your partner were more willing to have sex. Or you're mad because your partner came home late from work. Or you think you can't be happy because your partner doesn't like to sit on the couch and watch TV with you. Or you realize be, that you didn't know, in fact, before you got married, that your partner was so into video games. Or you're upset that your spouse likes to send mo spend money. Or, or you're so disappointed that your spouse doesn't take more leadership in the family or perhaps lacks the ambition to get a better job. The problem when you attribute your bad moods or feelings to your partner's behavior is that you then start controlling, punishing, coercing, guilting, or in any of many ways, manipulating him or her so that you can feel good, all because you have it wired up in your own head that your partner has to do and say and be a certain way in order for you to be happy. Now, I don't want you to get me wrong. I certainly don't mean to imply that what your partner says or does does not affect you. It does. Nor do I mean to say that you won't sometimes have negative feelings about your partner's decisions or actions. You certainly will. You're not a robot. You can't simply turn your emotions on and off like flipping a switch. But what I do mean to say is that ultimately you are the decider about how your partner's behavior will affect you. You have to take accountability for your reactions and emotions and not simply blame him or her for what you're feeling. Until you understand the meaning of self-responsibility, you'll not give yourself the emotional freedom to enjoy your relationship. You'll be on a roller coaster, as a matter of fact, going up and down, depending upon your partner, trying to be responsible for each other's moods, happiness, or self-esteem is simply exhausting. I like to say, stay in your own lane. There's a boundary between the two of you, and you have to respect that boundary. If either of you starts either controlling your spouse or allowing them to control you, then you're not going to be happy. You're going to feel resentment, which is not a good foundation for a happy marriage. You feel resentment when you make decisions to please somebody else, but without pleasing yourself. You've allowed yourself to be held captive by somebody else's moods or behavior or expectations rather than taking responsibility for your own life. All of this reminds me of a common saying from the world of Alcoholics Anonymous. We don't have relationships, we take hostages. 
If not responsible for ourselves, we try to manipulate our spouses into being responsible for us. And it simply doesn't work. What works is when you're fully responsible for yourself and you allow your partner the same right. This allows each of you the emotional freedom to be who you are rather than living to either change and control or appease and give in to each other. Please don't misunderstand. This isn't about not caring for your partner. In fact, I believe we need a lot more unselfish caring in our relationships. But it is about knowing that ultimately, if you don't take care of yourself, then it doesn't matter what kind of care your relationship offers, you're not going to be happy. I think this is a big concept for most people, so let's keep exploring it in the next few lectures.